Hey guys, Icon here from Voclia Music. In this video, we're going to look at using Doubler for live performances. Currently, due to COVID-19, real gigs are off the table, but live streaming performances have become increasingly popular. So much so that the industry is introducing new royalty-related guidelines to make sure each live streaming artist gets paid fairly. After talking over some quick points about live streaming and MIDI hardware controllers, we'll move into Ableton to look at techniques like live looping, quickly switching between kits, arming different channels, using a vocoder in live, and some useful clip tricks that work great in Ableton, among others. There are only a couple pieces of software other than your DAW that you need for a live streaming performance. The first one is called OBS, and this is a program that combines whatever audio input and screen you choose, whether it be the recording from your camera or your screen recording. It combines it with whatever audio input source you have and is able to transmit the entire package to whatever live streaming platform you're using, whether it be Facebook or YouTube or any others. The second thing you need is a device called Soundflower. What this does is it allows you to create an extra internal audio device in your computer so that you can split outputs. This is necessary so that you can, for example, listen to your performance live in your headphones while also sending it over to OBS. So the audio signal needs to be split to do that. We're not going to look at OBS or Soundflower more in this video, but we've dropped some links in the description to some great tutorials that'll help you set up very easily. As you can see, in addition to Doubler, we're also using another MIDI controller. This is Akai's APC40 Mark II, which is designed specifically to work with Ableton. So as you can see, this is very similar to Ableton's session view, the buttons here. There are knobs here that you can MIDI map, for example, to the master filter cutoff, to different parameters from individual sounds. Our favorite part about this is quickly being able to switch between different channels. So arming, for example, channel two, channel four, five, I could have a lead loaded in one and my drum kit loaded in another and some chords loaded here with all the MIDI devices I've planned in advance. And it helps to jump between clips. So for example, I could have a beat here in this one, I press it, it'll start to play perfectly on the next bar because of Ableton's global quantize and I can switch to this loop. And I can have all this page full of different loops that I record and live loop and do a bunch of other stuff with. There are some additional details like this crossfader, we'll get into that later, and some others. But the controls we're using here aren't that particularly complicated, so you don't necessarily need this MIDI controller to accomplish this. There are lots of cheap options on the market now, even iPad apps that can act as MIDI controllers via Bluetooth. You don't even need a cable to connect it. You can design where the buttons go, where the knobs go, where the arm buttons go, and you can customize it. There are tons and tons of options for Ableton MIDI controllers, and we've dropped a link in the description where you can check out our favorites. In Doubler, we're using controls and triggers at the same time. So we've mapped four drum sounds, and we're in the scale of F sharp minor. The way we set up our first looper is this drum kit. When we arm it, I can arm it here. We have its audio sending to this looper, looper channel. You don't have to always do this, but sometimes it's easier to work with audio than MIDI. So I'm also going to arm that channel. Before starting, just a quick point about what I've done to this hi-hat here. By using the note length and arpeggiator at a rate of 16th, even when I trigger the hi-hat once, it keeps on playing for 60 seconds. Of course, I don't want it to play for 60 seconds, but I'm going to get my audio from the looping channel and it's going to keep repeating the same pattern. Also, we've mapped one of the knobs here to the rate. This is so we can get some nice 30 second trap style or 20, 124th hi-hats. So here's how that sounds, just a hi-hat. Now I'm going to hit play and launch a clip with a drone and when I feel like I'm getting close to a loop I'm going to hit this button to start recording the loop and then hit it again so it starts playing. Switching to the other kit now. We've 
also mapped this knob to control the master's cutoff frequency. So now we have two loops recorded over the drone we started with. Now we're going to go on to some pitch uh, elements, but first we have to go to doubler and make sure triggers is off because we don't want our drums and pitch controls la launching at the same time. You can also do this by switching to another doubler profile that doesn't have any triggers. This is also useful if you need to switch keys, for example, as you see in this profile here, we have C sharp minor selected, whereas in our first one, we have F sharp minor, so if you have three or four songs during the performance, this is an easy way to switch keys quickly. I'll stay in the first one for now and make sure controls are enabled. I'll press play, arm my lead instrument and start soloing. <laughs> With this sound, we use some vowel MIDI expression using Eventide's undulator plugin and mapping the E syllable to control this ribbon, which controls certain parameters, for example, the mix, depth, and the type of tremolo that it's causing. So as you can see in doubler, when I stress the E syllable, e, uh, then we start to hear more tremolo. E. <laughs> Now for the next patch, which is some chords, we're going to use these knobs mapped to the filter cutoff and the sustain of the chords. Okay, so we have the control over the filter and sustain with that, but additionally, we've programmed some clips here to be able to further edit the sound. This technique is called using ghost clips in Ableton. So as you can see, these clips have no MIDI information. They're clips on a MIDI channel, but no notes whatsoever. So when I launch them, no notes will start to play. What the ghost clips are used for is live automation. So for example, in this less notes clip, I've automated within the clip that this less, less notes chord device is on. In the second one, let me just stop all clips. When I click the second one, chord two is activated. When I click the third one, chord three becomes activated and the other two are shut off. So what I'm using this for is to switch between chord shapes during my performance and because they're ghost clips, they won't be introducing any more notes. You can also map other types of automation. You could have a delay device that turns on. You could have a reverb device or any effect you choose. All you have to do is double click the clip, find the automation here. For example, this is one of the chord devices. This is a device on. And in within the clip, you make sure it's off or on, for example, depending on what you want. Another very useful feature in Ableton for mixing between different layers of sounds and also managing a live set is this crossfader here. You see it when you press this X here in the bottom right corner. And it also introduces this A and B here. So this allows you to mix between channels. So you can put channels in either an A group or a B group. So I'll put my chords in B, for example, and my lead in A, and arm them both and perform at the same time and then mix between them using the crossfader. <laughs> 
in another one of our videos, we show you how to set up a vocoder with doubler and it's very easy, especially because on Macs, doubler acts as both an audio input and the MIDI input for the vocoder at the same time, where usually those two are separate. Definitely be sure to check out that video to see how to set up the vocoder in Ableton. For now, I'm just gonna demonstrate it with the rest of the track playing. Super easy to set up a vocoder with doubler in Ableton. Like I said before, definitely check out our other video on how to do this. The last techniques we're going to look at are about bringing external loops and audio clips into our performance. So I have this example track here. So let's say I just want to loop the first couple bars of that and make sure it's adapting to my tempo of 90. So all you have to do is you come to Warp. Complex Pro is usually the best way to go with long songs. And I'm bringing both of these arrows all the way here. So this segment BPM is the most important aspect of warping. You need to accurately know the tempo of the loop or audio you imported so that Ableton's warp algorithm can pick it up and then edit it accordingly. So I know this track is 124 BPM, so I wrote it here. Remember, our track is only 90. Let's see how that sounds. Turn on the metronome to check if it works. And then I can crop that so we just have this part. Actually, I'll undo that. I'll make a copy of it before cropping. Now I'll crop. So I'll call this loop A. And then I'll choose another section here, maybe the next bars. Remember, you have to carry both of these arrows. Right click crop again. Make sure the segment BPM is correct. So let's test those both with the mic. I'm going to increase my tempo slowly, slowly. So fun to modulate tempo, by the way, during live performance. Definitely, that's also another tip. And now we have two loops with this song. They're from similar places, so they sound the same. Let's say we want these clips to automatically jump between each other. We can program a follow action. So here, when you double click a clip in the clip editing view, you have L. And you can choose for an action to occur after a certain amount of bars. So for example, I'll double click loop A. Say, after eight bars, go down to the next clip. So this means you won't have to keep using your finger to launch every single clip with every single section. You can just launch this. You can see it's flashing. In eight bars, it will automatically go down. So you can lay, down, lay all of these down, forget about them, have them go in the order you want, and then move on to performing your lead or chords or bass with doubler. Thanks for watching. We're really excited about the possibilities Doubler offers as a live performance tool, whether it be live gigs or live stream performances. Please send us over any examples you have using Doubler in a live performance. We'd love to check it out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. And as a reminder, we've dropped some links to tutorials in the description that will show you how you can set up your own live stream performance very easily. For more information about Doubler, head to voclia.com and subscribe for more videos. See you soon.